Yeah, hi friends. Welcome to uh, from the first series of Fantastic Talks. It's my great pleasure to have all of you. The world has moved very fast in 2020. Although you know some people say that it was moving very very slow, but if you look at it, 2020 has gone in a blink of an eye. And as the great people, great say that they are decades when nothing happens, and then they are they are days when decades happen. And this is what has happened in 2020. This is not an year we are going to forget easily. Mm -hmm. If you look at the changing landscape, India is now well positioned to become a superpower. You know, this is something we couldn't have imagined some of these things a year back. But the world has changed in this one year due to the COVID pandemic. Uh, you know, people, companies and the world is looking to move to India from China and other countries. And, uh, you know, India with its uh, demographics, its uh, young workforce, and now be, uh, becoming the manufacturing and the consumer hub of the world, we are, experience, uh, we, we are experiencing a surge of growth across all sectors with a never say die attitude. India is a making a mark as the ultimate place to be the consumer center of the world, to fulfill the appetite of the upcoming Indians, every company across the globe is eyeing the Indian market. But like every uh, coin has two sides, the same is, same is here. And the problem is that we are not investing enough. So if I was to ask you why, you know, the India, there is, seems to be an amazing future ahead. But we are very concerned, okay, look, in markets had crashed and they are now up by 40, 50%. So is there still any, you know, gains left? And this is the types of questions that we want to, try to be answering today. We don't want you to be sitting on the side edges and not doing anything because there is a very important saying that you can only win a race if you run in it. So what is happening is that there are a lot of people who are sitting on the side and they are not participating in this race. And one of the issues is that sometimes when we start our investment journey, it also happens that we get misled or we meet the wrong person who gives us a wrong advice. And that's really, really heartbreaking for me to see because India and overall investing has so much potential. Look at the kind of returns people have made, the power of compounding, the amount of money you can make. But people lose their ways because of the wrong guidance, wrong advice, meeting the wrong wealth managers. And that only happens because they are gullible and they don't understand this journey themselves. And, you know, they are totally dependent on a third person or they are just reading what they see online or they hear some articles and they start investing. But we have to understand the media today is only talking about things that are exciting. So when the Bitcoin is going up, they'll start talking about Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. But they will not tell you the risks involved with Bitcoin, whether it is the right investment for you or not. And, you know, everybody's writing with his own bias, this thing. And especially when things are going up, everybody says, bye, bye, bye. When the things start going down, and when you should actually be buying, everybody is saying sell, sell, sell. So what happens is that if you remain invested in the market, behavior finance says you are invested in the market for 10 years, there's a 98 to 99% possibility that you'll make a good 8 to 10% return minimum. But most of us won't, don't make this return because we buy when the things are going up and we sell when the things are going wrong, are going down. So point is, guys, we have to change this. And for this, we came out with this concept of called, called Fantastic, where we said we will teach the basics of investing to everyone. Take care. Without pain, there is no, no pain, there is no gain. Simply without learning how to invest. And you, you will not be able to do this journey. Yes, you can always use wealth managers. You can always use help on the way. And I will recommend you to do that. But... But you must also understand the basics. So this fantastic is a three-week program that has been launched by, by us where you have to pay for it. It's not free because you are getting genuine, honest advice. Three weeks, uh, you know, every day you are taught about budgeting, financial planning, investing, stock market, equity, insurance, everything that you need to know. And you can, after that, be doing it on your own. And after that, you get one year of handholding where we, you know, every month we do a connection. We make a group of people who can discuss and we, we help you start your investment journey. We provide you an advisor or a faculty who has nothing, no, no, nothing to gain from you, 
who gives you honest, genuine advice, whether you're on the right track, you can ask them any question, any confusion you have. And these fantastic talks are also on the series of that, where we want to, uh, you know, create an awareness about uh, investing and what are the issues with investing, what are the various things that are coming to my to mind. So, you know, guys, so be choose to be fantastic, choose to be rich, choose to be part of this uh, huge economy that is going up, choose to be a part of this market, choose to be a part of the global market. You know, today they say by investing in a stock of a company, you can get the most intelligent people working for you. So example, if you buy a stock of Reliance, then you have actually Mukesh Ambani working for you. Or you buy a stock of Tesla, then you have uh, Elon Musk working for you. And today you have amazing mutual funds who are doing this buying and selling on your behalf. But you must understand these products and you must understand what it's all about. And together, my hope is that we continue with these talks every fortnight. And in the, the next coming months, years, and decades, we, we continue this and we are able to help you create a lot of uh, wealth. So together, today, I'm very, very pleased to invite a person whose name is synonymous with wealth. You know, Naveen Agarwal is one of the best speakers I've ever heard. And he's an amazing, uh, you know, authority on the stock markets, investing. And if you look at the performance of the Motilal Oswal mutual funds, they have been above par. So, you know, above par amongst the best. And today, if you were to looking for a good fund or good philosophy, then Motilal Oswal is, is something you can really trust. And, uh, you know, we ha he's the managing director and the CEO of Motilal Oswal Mutual Fund. And he's responsible for building and running various businesses over the last two decades. He's a part of the executive board's drive strategy, reviews all businesses besides capital allocation of the group. And he is an amazing human being, an amazing person. So without further ado, Naveen, handing over uh, the, the mic to you to take it forward from here. Thank you so much, uh, Sanjeev. It's uh, uh, always a total pleasure and delight uh, you know, to be interacting with you right from my very first session uh, that I did. And you've been very generous uh, with all the kind words. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, while you have your bunch of questions uh, that you may want to ask, I want to kick this session off uh, by, I think, one of the most common questions that is being asked, which is that how do we see the current landscape and you know how does one plan to build wealth? And I have some uh, you know interesting slides that I'd love to you know show to all the audience. Uh, let me just try and share my screen with them. So that they are able to see, uh, you know, some of these slides, uh, and which will answer some of the opening questions. That I'm happy to, you know, deep dive into, uh, you know, uh, more details and questions that you may have. So, uh, firstly, I want to do a quick rain check. Uh, is the slide that I put up uh, visible on the screen? Uh, I Sometimes guess... it will take a few seconds of lag, so I think it should be visible on your screen. Uh, I think maybe what I'll do is even before the slide is visible, I can start talking about, you know, what the slide will show to you. So, you know, not so long ago, uh, back in April, May, June quarter, there were all sorts of debates uh, globally, whether the recovery, you know, will be an L-shaped recovery, a U-shaped recovery, a W-shaped recovery, a V-shaped recovery, K-shaped recovery. There were all sorts of uh, questions. And uh, we now have data, so you don't have to speculate. And I'm going to show you some simple charts that I could show you 50 slides of the same, uh, you know, uh, uh, phenomena. But I will stick to just four simple charts. Maruti is India's largest, you know, car company. And uh, in the month of January, they sold 160,000 cars. And uh, back in April 2019, they used to sell 140,000 cars. In fact, uh, they are fast tracking their new factory of 250,000 cars in Gujarat. And they want to ensure that they're ramping up their facility. They're telling all their uh, component suppliers to really ramp up and speed up so that, you know, they can meet uh, the rising demand, uh, which is really going up at a unexpectedly fast pace. Hero Motors is the largest two wheeler company, and they too are selling more two wheelers than they sold uh, last year. Right. And so, you know, the biggest auto companies are really selling, you know, more automotive 
automobiles compared to what they were selling pre-COVID. And I don't need to tell you about what is happening to the real estate sector based on some of the incentives and SOPs that the government have offered based on the stamp reduction. If you to go full screen, uh, it'll, I think it'll be more visible for uh, the people. Yeah, actually, it's uh, visible full screen on my screen, uh, Sanjeev. I think uh, it may be uh, required to be done on this one also. I mean, uh, is this uh, better now? Is it, uh, I think uh, on my screen, it is showing full screen. Uh, it is it is full screen, but the slideshow is not on. So we can see the side slides and. Okay, yeah. So this is something which is, uh, I can stop share and redo it, but it's not, uh, I can only see one slide, which is the full screen slide on my uh, screen. But let me try and do this again, just in case that works. Just allow me one second, please. I think it's uh, continuing to show me the side slides, uh, actually, although I have tried and uh, OK. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's so much, this, better, much better now. All right. All right. Great. So basically, what I'm only trying to say is that whether it is Maruti's car sales or Hero Motors uh, 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 volumes or the GST collections in India, which have touched a lifetime high of 1.2 lakh crores in the month of January, or the eBay bill generation, whatever you want to look at, I think the shape of the recovery is loud and clear. It's a V-shaped, proper V-shaped recovery. And you may recollect that we were saying that the size of India's stimulus is one of the smallest, and hence the recovery will be one of the weakest, right? But that has not been the case. It has actually surprised entrepreneurs, businessmen. It has surprised government of India. It has surprised the stock markets. And from a stage of hopelessness, you know, back in April, we are at a stage where we are un uh, finding the 15,000 Nifty to be unbelievable and, in fact, euphoric, right? So this is, uh, this is the V-shaped recovery. The COVID cases are continuously coming down, active cases. The recovery rates are 97%. And now vaccination has also started. And it's a matter of time that this really... India is really the vaccine capital of the world, supplying vaccines to all over the world. So I was just hearing Nandan Nilikani talk just before this session, and he was saying that there will be no supply issue as far as vaccines are concerned. And now uh, with the private sector uh, being allowed to start vaccination shortly and government putting up one of the top uh, officials to you know drive and monitor this, you're likely to see the drive on vaccination really scale up in the coming months. This is the uh, real meat of the matter. If you look at the corporate earnings, the corporate earnings this quarter ending December grew by more than 30%. And this is on top of a 27% growth in the previous quarter. But what is interesting for you to know is that the sales actually declined by 6% in September quarter. And we're actually a zero growth in December quarter. So this 30% earnings growth comes even before the economy has recovered because of cost-cutting exercises undertaken by the corporate sector. Imagine what will happen when you have a lifetime high GDP growth and very strong sales growth coming in next year and you have continued operating leverage for the next year. And that's why analysts are forecasting a 35% growth in earnings as far as the next year is concerned. The other thing that I want to leave you with is the budget where people were expecting that the government will tweak taxes, there will be COVID tax, there will be estate duty, there will be reversal of corporate tax. Most of the action was expected as far as increases in taxes are concerned. In reality, none of this happened. And where you were expecting no action, a bunch of action happened. For instance, the government very boldly and first time in its life announced a glide path for FISC to 4.5% by FI26. And guess what? Rather than criticizing this decision, or rather than threatening a downgrade of India, SNP came on a standards and ports came on a call to say that they too will change their focus on growth and privatization in India rather than focusing on fiscal deficit. So the bluff was called 
by the finance honorable finance minister and you finally see the rating agencies aligning with the priorities of india which is a big change is something that i have never seen before i have been waiting since 2014 uh, when uh, prime minister launched the indra dhanush program in pune to see the bank nationalization act coming through and i'm really really glad that finally this has seen the light of the day because the government now has control over the upper house of rajya sabha as well and hence putting this through the rajya sabha is going to be easier we are finally seeing the use of the word privatization and monetization of all the assets so basically let private sector take its own sweet time to come back and spend on assets but as far as the public sector is concerned government is looking at privatizing warehouses of nafed government is looking at uh, privatizing roads of nhai government is looking at privatizing airports of airport authority of india ports and the works and this will release a lot of capital for these entities to in turn make greater investments in the future again a capital expenditure of 5.5 trillion rupees was totally unexpected in the budget the government announced the setting up of a dfi where 5 trillion of aum will be created in the next 3 years with 200 billion initial capital and on top of that the government allowed foreign borrowings for retaining it so basically you will have a flood of money available for investments and infrastructure and capital expenditure which is what the economy sorely needs at this point in time we finally have the architecture of the stress bank which will allow banks to focus on lending and the stress bank will focus on resolution of the past stress tax terrorism is further reduced where the reopening of the assessments period has been reduced and this is the first time i'm hearing in my life that economists are talking about deficit being overstated till now they were talking about deficits being understated so a fantastic result season that i spoke about earlier which was being uh, uh, greeted in a very muted manner really was met with a resounding response after the budget came in and all the fears of the government took a back seat and the focus returned to the excitement of corporate profits now i really believe that stocks are slaves of earnings so if you look at the decade of 2000 to 2010 earnings grew by 13% per annum and nifty grew by 13% per annum but the following decade was a loss decade where earnings grew by 7% and nifty grew by 5% this is a time period when there was almost no earnings growth for four or five years and you see what happened the corporate profit to gdp which was at 7.8% collapsed to 1.8% and for those of you who are not aware this number is 12% for united states used to be 8% for india and is average of 5% we believe that as corporate profit to gdp reverts to mean you could have almost a 25% compounded earnings growth over the next 3 to 4 years and if stocks are slaves of earnings then there's no reason to believe that stock market should do well i want to just remind you that between 2002 and 2008 corporate earnings grew from 80 rupees to 280 rupees and i think that we are in a similar phase as corporate profit to gdp reverts to mean and we have very strong corporate profit growth and if stocks are slaves of earnings then strong corporate profit growth will lead to strong market performance the second framework that i want to highlight is that bear markets are characterized by miss and cut bull markets are characterized by beat and upgrade what does miss and cut mean that every quarter the companies miss the estimates of the analyst and then the analyst then cut the future estimates so you are in a kind of a negative spiral and what is beat and upgrade that companies beat the estimates of the analyst and uh, 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 and then and this upgrade their numbers and this is typically an upcycle phenomena and guess what the second quarter and the third quarter saw beat and upgrade in corporate earnings this is something that i saw between 2002 to 2008 consistently quarter after quarter and we are finally seeing it in this cycle as well if you see the green bars we had a lot of green, green bars show you when there was a beat and upgrade and all these green bars show you the era when there was continuous beat and upgrade in the stock markets and if you see the recent past all the red bars show you the miss and cut and we have had a bunch of miss and cuts for the last 5 6 years in fact fi 21 was the first year after a long time when we had the beat and upgrade cycle resume we have seen nifty eps being upgraded from 456 to 536 for fi21 and for fi22 from 637 to 713 and 
And I believe that this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just the beginning of the beat and upgrade cycle. Uh, the last framework that I want to leave you with is this exciting journey that India has embarked from a two and a half trillion dollars to five trillion dollars GDP. There are only three countries in the world which have traveled this journey, United States, Japan and China. And I want to uh, highlight to you that US took 10 years to travel this journey. China took five years. India will hopefully take somewhere between five and 10 years. And during that 10 year period, the US markets gave you a return. The market as a whole gave you a return of 70% per annum. During this five year period, when China traveled this journey, their markets compounded 28% per annum. And so this is the exciting phase. We believe that as India will take somewhere between five and 10 years, there's no reason for me to believe that market returns for India too will be quite strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here and this will give you a little perspective of how one should look at India. For those of you who have missed participating in the market or who have made tons of money participating in the market, my only request would be that you may not have traveled the 2002 to 2008 journey. You would have not seen the multi-baggers and the wealth creation at that time. You are only at the beginning of this corporate earning cycle. You are only early stages of this two and a half to five trillion dollar journey. You are at the beginning of the beat and upgrade cycle. So if you have bought right, just sit tight. This is the only way to create enormous wealth and wealth creation does not happen every day. There are cycles like this, which take you uh, to a different orbit. And I believe that this is only possible if you buy right and sit tight during this journey. So Sanjeev, with those opening remarks, I'm very happy to uh, you know now take up any questions that you may have. Yeah, thank you, Naveen. I think it was very clear and crisp. Uh, you know, a lot of people who have been sitting on the fences that what should I be doing now? So you have shown them some very good data. And at the end of the day, nothing talks louder than data. So I think yeah. the data is showing that the Indian recovery is uh, right on track, if I've understood what you have said uh, correctly. You know, and the V-shape recovery is faster than what uh, analysts expected. Companies today have been able to cut their costs. They have been, you know, like even I see with my own company, we had been, you know, we had been living in a world where we felt that it cannot change. And, uh, you know, and when the COVID hit and everything was shut down, we had to change it. We had to reinvent. We had to cut costs, which we never thought we could. And, and we have cut that cost. And one of the places where a lot of corporates have saved money is on real estate, where, uh, you know, companies have downsized their offices. You know, that has brought much more capital on, on the table. So I think this is all going to lead to higher growth. We can already see the numbers with the same flat sales. Today, you know, the companies are making 15 to 30 percent higher. But Naveen, yes. now tell me that do you think uh, how long do you think this cycle is going to continue? And what is your feeling on this make in India? That do you think this make in India is finally taking off? Will it bring in another round of, you know, boom? And we have seen that, look, while services is a very good segment for quick growth, but it is not sustainable because services come easily, they go out easily also, whereas manufacturing is sticky. Companies find it very difficult to move out of China, move out of Taiwan, move out of Vietnam, wherever they set up their base. So what do you feel about this make in India and the kind of opportunity it offers? And how would you be, how how does an investor who wants to get, uh, take an advantage of this, you know, what are the sectors he invests in? How does he benefit from this? Yeah, great question. Uh, so let me uh, uh, share with uh, all the audience that uh, I used to head a research team uh, back in the year 2000. And every year on 31st of December, I used to write a 250 page report, uh, which summarized all the points about how I see the markets in the future. And what happened was, Sanjeev, that 2002 was a good year for the market, the first year when the markets did well. 2003, I wrote again that don't worry about what has happened in 2002. This is just the beginning. OK, just hold on to your horses. You'll make a lot of money. 2004, December, again, I so I used to take a round the world ticket. My first stop used to be London. Then I used to go across the five cities of the United States. And then I used to cross Pacific to uh, do Hong Kong, Singapore and meet with all the Indian investors. So I, I used to do 75 meetings for three weeks. 
every quarter religiously i did that since the year 2000 and i must tell you that 2002 people asked me that now we've made money 2003 2004 2005 2006 2007 and you know if you analyze things very objectively like i showed you in the slides it was loud and clear that the bull market is still alive so all i can tell you is that the answer to your question as to where we are in the cycle i would say we are at the foothills of a bull market most people are making a mistake of comparing 15000 with 7600 i think the right way to do this is to compare 15000 with 12500 pre covid so effectively you are up by only 15% and you have a corporate earnings growth of more than 15% in this year you have a corporate earnings growth of 35% next year you have a corporate earnings growth of 25% the year after that and i want to remind again and again that stocks are slaves of earnings if earnings grow then stocks will follow whatever the earnings do, right and we've seen that wherever there's a beat and upgrade in earnings those stocks do very well after the result season despite being well owned despite being well researched so the answer is that this is a, a long cycle and you have to buy right and sit right to make real money you may have made some money but this is nothing this is just a trailer this can change your life if you really show the temperament to be in the market for a long period of time uh, about make in india i must share with you that i have seen a lot of government schemes being launched and failed but what the government has announced this time around sanjeev is absolutely revolutionary and it will change things production linked incentive is not a spray and pray approach it is not distributing it to everybody it is being distributed to a handful of players who are going out there and setting up a lot of capital expenditure so i believe that this is something that will fundamentally add at least 1% or more to the gdp growth of india i think the need of the hour given our demographics was to revive manufacturing and finally uh, this will revive manufacturing and let me tell you that cummins which is a global company with uh, you know uh, presence in india bosch which is a global company with presence in india honeywell abb siemens bharat forge and many other companies have big plans to take advantage of this and ramp up in fact you may be surprised to know that tata group has made a more than billion dollar investment in south india take advantage of this scheme you may not be aware but foxconn is now producing apple phones here and they're talking about even producing ipads here this is something which is unheard of so you wait and watch i believe that this is something which is going to be really creating jobs really driving manufacturing and can add up to 1% or more to the gdp growth of india so i am very excited about the fact that there is a manufacturing renaissance that is finally visible and a scheme which is extremely relevant to india at this point in time so i am quite bullish and there are very many names that i to uh, some of them are represented in our portfolios and we are looking at more such names but we believe that there will be no dearth of opportunities to play this wow so that's uh, good so also on the next side uh, uh, navin there are a lot of people here uh, who want to get into investing at the moment so how would you recommend them to enter the market at this moment if i was to ask you if you had your own lump sum money where would you put it and uh, if you were to start maybe 3 to 4 sips so what what are the sips that you would choose yeah so i'll tell you uh, one of the one of the best products in the market in my view is what used to be called a multi cap fund earlier and what is called a flexi cap fund now what that does is it gives you total flexibility to invest in anything which makes sense can you imagine sanjeev that if i if i hold you back by saying that invest 65% in mid caps and up to 35% in small and uh, 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 small and large caps or if i tell you that you invest up to 85% in large caps and if you find a great opportunity outside this what will you do finding a great idea itself is very difficult right 
having mm-hmm. found the great idea if i hold your hands back to say that sanjeev invest so much in this cap so much in that cap well money is not made looking at cap there could be a large company like apple which can go on to become a five bagger and there could be a small company which can go on to become a multi bagger right like we have let's say vivo global in our schemes which we bought at 700 today the price is 3200 but when we bought it it was a tiny small cap and we bought it in our uh, uh, multi cap scheme so all i'm trying to tell you is that basically funds which do not have this restriction will do very well so my first recommendation for lump sum investments where i would put we where we have put maximum money of our own and you know they say that there is nothing better than skin in the game right so i would recommend what used to be earlier called multi cap funds and what is now called flexi cap funds so that you have full flexibility to buy money making items that's my first recommendation my second recommendation is that because markets have gone up and a lot of people are worried about the markets the second product that i'd like to recommend is our mutual fund dynamic fund why dynamic fund i let me just remind, give you an example in march collapse nobody was buying stocks everybody was afraid of what will happen right even buffett was recommending a uh, blue uh, uh, doom ahead right our dynamic fund which was 40% allocated to equities because of our scientific indicator called movie index mutual fund value index doubled the exposure of equities from 40% to 80% now can you believe that a fund in the middle of the crash at 8400 nifty goes and doubles its exposure to equity from would an investor have been able to do this impossible so i think a dynamic fund will give you lower return than equity fund but it will give you much lower volatility than equity. so that is the second fund that i want to recommend the third fund that i want to recommend is a multi asset fund now today fixed income is giving you very poor returns right so our multi asset fund is a cocktail of four things uh indian equities uh global equities uh debt and gold and we believe that based on our 20 year back testing this can give you a return of roughly 8.2% with lower tax rate than debt now this is something that you will not earn in your bank deposit fixed deposit and interest rates are falling right so that is the third product and the last product that i want to recommend is that in a in a cycle like the one which i explained to you right a small and mid cap fund like our focus 30 uh, uh, mid cap fund will always give you surprises mid caps do badly in a down cycle and they do exceedingly well in an up cycle and i am a strong believer that mid caps will outperform the large caps in the next 5 years time so these are the four funds you can choose to invest as a lump sum you can consider sips in the same products but i believe that it's not about timing these products it's about time in these products will you give these products the full 5 to 6 years as corporate earnings revive as india becomes a 5 trillion dollar economy as all these themes play out will you give them 5 6 years if you do give them 5 to 6 years it's not important for you to do anything else all you will make tons of money they say that money is never made by buying and selling money is made by sitting you know you let your money work and i i like the quote that you uh, mentioned this is a quote by lenin right at the beginning that there are decades when nothing happens and there are weeks where decades happen i'm telling you decades are going to happen in the next 5 years live it and it will change your life yeah so very well said uh, navin i think you have at least got me excited to be investing more so although i have personally increased my investments over the last 6 to 8 uh matlab even last one year because i think the opportunity is tremendous and uh, you know and let me just add this to everyone who's sitting on the sides because you know i meet so many people who are uh, who are sitting on the side and saying look uh, you know the market has gone up so much i really want to be a part of this market but i'm just waiting for the right opportunity guys that opportunity may never come and you cannot win a race if you don't participate in it and as navin beautifully said don't look at the market that it's gone from 7500 to 15000 look at it it's gone up from 12000 to 15000 and look at what has happened to india in the last one year india has become the vaccine capital of the world 
you know, a lot of vaccines are going to get manufactured in India. Indian pharmacy companies are being looked at with much more respect. And I'm sure they are going to take up this up by improving their manufacturing quality, capacity. You know, so much manufacturing is now coming to India. People are looking to source from outside China. So even the exporters and all are looking at, uh, you know, higher sales. So why, why do we feel that the opportunity has been missed? I think it's a, it's a matter. And as Naveen said, if you have five to 10 years in your mind, then it's always a right time to invest. So again, I will say, guys, don't stop sitting on the side and come in, start investing, start your SIP. So next, um, uh, you know, Naveen, one of my, again, favorite questions from you, you know, Motilal Oswal also has some very good index funds like your uh, S&P 500 index and the NASDAQ 100 which gives you an opportunity to uh, S&P basically 500 means the best 500 companies in the world. And whereas NASDAQ 100 means probably the best tech, 100 tech companies in the world. So what do you feel about them? They have also seen a massive return. And typically they say, okay, look, you know, then US markets perform for 10 years, then they don't perform for 10 years. So a lot of people are thinking about these, but they're not sure what to do. So how would you guide them for these two funds? Yeah. So firstly, uh, I must tell you that a broad-based index like S&P is not hostage to what happens to technology, right? There are a lot of uh, reports. In fact, uh, Ray Dalio wrote a you know report yesterday talking about how emerging technologies are expensive. So S&P 500 allows you the best of the consumer companies, the best of the financial services companies, credit card companies, including technology companies. So S&P 500, I would say, is I would say my favorite uh, recommendation at this point in time. But I would also tell you that the world of technology comprising of Facebook, Apple, Amazon, right? Uh, Microsoft, Netflix, and Google, they will continue to surprise you, right? And so basically, both these products look good to me from a diversification point of view. Don't put 100% of your eggs in one country, you've seen what has happened to India. NASDAQ has multiplied 10 times in the last decade. Have you participated in that journey? Have you participated in what Google has created, what Amazon has created, what Apple has created? So my suggestion would be to prefer S&P 500 over NASDAQ after the last decade of performance, but also look at NASDAQ from a diversification point of view. Our view is that while globally, a, la a significant part of the savings are invested by people in global markets. Indian investors, and you should ask this question to yourself, you should invest at least 15% of your equity allocation in offshore equities. And while we already have these two products, I'm promising you that in the coming months, you will see many more such interesting products from our stable. But it is very important from a diversification point of view to own some of these companies, which are unfortunately not really these kind of companies. There is no parallel in India. You know, I can buy an IT services company, but I cannot buy an Amazon. I can. There's no Facebook of India. You know, the the Facebook of India is Facebook. The Amazon of India is Amazon. The Apple of India is Apple. So it's best to allocate a part of your capital to this. So this is something that I would advise from a diversification point of view or from an asset allocation point of view to have a 15% exposure to international equities. Very well answered, uh, Naveen. Uh, you know, I personally have taken my exposure to global uh, to almost 25%. And I believe like, look, uh, today we are living in a global economy. So why shouldn't we be a part of the global wealth creation cycle? You know, Absolutely. and if we are dependent on India I, and... Uh, uh, and I think there's a huge, huge opportunity on it. You know, on the NASDAQ, let me ask you a question. Like you said, there are decades when nothing happens and then there are days when decades happen. Same thing has happened to technology. This COVID in yes. the last six months has actually pushed forward the di digitization by almost yeah. a decade to or more, even more. Like could, yeah. I could imagine a time when an 80-year-old person would also be as comfortable on a Zoom and, you know, all of us are doing virtual meetings. All of us today understand Zoom, Teams, or any other video conferencing tool. You know, we are, it's, and the, whether you look at the chats and other things, everything has become seamless. Uh, you know, 
KYCs, which used to have a lot of human components, were suddenly changed even in India. And today they are 100% online. You can be sitting and doing everything. So digital is actually becoming a major disruptor. So although I did do feel that you know Nasdaq may have outperformed in the last 10 years, but given this happened, you still, I at least find a lot of meat still in Nasdaq. What do you feel? Is, is my feeling correct? That uh, you know that whole uh, digitization as it has come forward, is it actually going to drive uh, uh, you know technology stocks even higher despite the kind of growth they have shown? I wouldn't be surprised. See, uh, if you read, uh, there's a lady called Kathy Wood who runs a fund called ARK, and if you look at the uh, kind of and their white papers are available on their website, and if you look at the kind of projections that they have for what will happen to electric vehicles, what will happen to fintech and so on, you'd be surprised to see that we are prisoners of our past where we've never seen a trillion dollar company. And now when we see a trillion dollar company, we think, oh my God, this is something which is too overvalued. I think today for a change, companies are really addressing the global market. Uh, companies are really addressing the entire 7 billion population. And it is an amazing world where these companies have 70-80% global market share. Earlier, getting a 70-80% country market share itself was very difficult. And I think that is that is a paradigm which many of us are uncomfortable to understand or difficult find it difficult to understand. And that is why a person like Warren Buffett himself has got Apple and is not participating wholeheartedly. So I think the younger generation and the younger people on the call will find it easier to participate in that upside and will really make a lot more money. I would actually recommend everybody. I mean, you've shown the courage to allocate 25%. I would encourage everybody at least to go to 15 and then you know, gradually try to go even higher as you go along and as you have more and more options available. Oh, really superb. Uh, Naveen, now on to the next question. What, what do you feel about uh, value investing? You know, value investing was dead till about uh, four months ago. And now it's made such a strong comeback. Yet uh, they are still value stocks and value picks uh, which have not gone up. And a lot of uh, fund managers or a lot of even investors are talking about, you know, picking up these value stocks that the next round of growth or uh, returns are going to come from these value stocks. What do you feel about them? Okay. So you talked about uh, NASDAQ is Nasdaq value, right? Is Facebook value, is Netflix value, right? Uh, I think, see, there is nothing like value and growth to be very honest with you. What is the price that we want to pay for a stock? The price that we want to pay for any company, including let's say Nation Paints or Hindustan Unilever or anybody, any company is less than the present value of the future cash flows, right? So basically, we've got our own frameworks of how much, where is the Lakshman Rekha for how much we want to pay. So if you see, our portfolios typically will have a PE to growth ratio of less than two times. Right? That is our sweet spot. It will typically be around one and a half times. And we feel that, see, uh, uh, Ramdev ji has been doing these wealth creation studies for the last 25 years. And I complimented him a few years back when... For the first time, he added G, right, in the QGLP, which basically is growth, right? And I don't know whether uh, you are following this, but uh, there is this fund from UK called Fundsmith, who in his latest book, Investing for Growth, has explained the concept of reinvestment. See, getting high return ratios is not enough. If you are not able to reinvest more and more of your capital at those high return ratios. So we believe that uh, the, the debate between value and growth is something that doesn't make sense. It is basically your circle of competence. Uh, I think growth is life. If you, if you don't have growth in companies, then I would call them, I, I would say they're more like cigar butts then. You can get a puff of uh, smoke out of them. But to create enduring value, to create multi-baggers is not possible. So basically, there's a cyclical company which is beaten down, like the steel companies or commodity companies. Can they double? Can they treble? The answer is yes. But can they create enduring value? Forget my forecast about the future. 
you please take a look at the last 10 years 20 years we have a thing called a 100 billion dollar club meaning all the companies in the world which have crossed a 100 billion dollar market cap and if you look at the list it straddles financial services sector consumer sector healthcare sector and so on it doesn't have commodity stocks in it it doesn't have infrastructure names in it it doesn't have capital goods names in it so we've got so much wisdom to learn on the process of wealth creation over the last century right that we, we there is no point in really puffing the cigar butts i mean uh, is there an opportunity for us to make money in some of those quality uh, you know value stocks the answer is yes and we'd be open to looking at them in fact we 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 do own you know names like that in our portfolio so i would refrain from the debate of value versus growth i would say that you should decide what is your philosophy stick to your circle of competence and uh, if you can somehow get enduring multi baggers right then you will create a lot more wealth for your clients in the long term thank you very well answered uh, navin so uh, you know i will ask you one more question and i will uh, in, in, and we'll try to take some of the audience questions so i will request the audience to please put in your questions in the comments uh, column so we can pick up a couple of questions i know the with the number of people who are online we may not be able to answer all the questions but we'll definitely like to pick up a few so navin uh, i remember you had shown me an amazing aif and which is doing really really well uh, you know where you are looking at uh, picking up winners which still have the potential to give a almost a 15% return in the next 5 to 10 years uh, so can you tell us about this that you know how did the idea come about you know how is it going and you know and how are you finding these companies and why do you think this this is going to be one of the most uh, exceptional investment opportunity yeah so basically uh, because covid happened uh, what we did was a lot of the portfolios have legacy stocks in them right bought pre covid for a different reason but we believe that covid presents a lot of you know fresh opportunities for instance we believe that intermediation the return of intermediation is a big theme and we believe that uh, some of the strongest lenders in india will benefit enormously out of uh, you know intermediation see uh, that whenever there's an upcycle in the economy credit growth of the banking sector is in excess of the nominal gdp and whenever you are in a down cycle the credit growth of the banking sector is less than the nominal gdp growth because the investment engine in a down cycle is punctured while an investment engine in an up cycle is revived so we believe that with credit growth likely to be strong and the value migration from psu banks to private banks we believe that some of the intermediaries which have already touched lifetime highs whether it's hdfc bank whether it's kotak bank and so on icici bank we believe many more a lot more wealth creation will happen in these things so that's the first theme we are investing in the second theme that we are investing in is called health is wealth the awareness on health on insurance has gone up dramatically after covid and we believe that there are beautiful companies within the insurance space and the healthcare space to bet on that right the third is called the bull whip so what happens is that you may be aware that inventories have dried up across the board and the value chain will see rebuilding of those inventories in the coming quarters as demand comes back and there are interesting plays there and then obviously there's atmanirbhar you spoke about uh, you know this theme earlier and there are very interesting opportunities for us to you know play uh, uh, that theme and then above all there's digitization so for instance card companies fintech companies this is the new order of the day sanjee while this is already playing a big role in wealth creation globally i think it's a matter of time that this will happen in india so this fund has been created to invest in those winners who will really thrive and prosper in the middle of this pandemic rather than be a victim of it or be neutral impact because of this and so you are hand picking uh, uh, fresh themes and fresh stocks rather than carrying the baggage of legacy and we believe that as a product it can do quite well for investors from a longer term perspective yeah i'm actually personally very excited about the product 
and i really like the fact that all the you know eifs although they have a minimum uh, requirement of 1 crore you have also staggered the call for money so that yes. a person have to put uh, and he can see where his money is getting invested and you are taking the money as you are coming across the opportunities so you know that's uh, that's a very exciting uh, thing so i will answer one question that people are asking uh, you know about uh, that is about uh, you know angel investing and startup investing and all so i don't know how much value we can add there but people are asking what's the the future of the edutech or what's the future of the digital lending platform so i'll try to put in a little bit ki look guys the world is changing india is changing and these companies are some of these companies are going to be the future winners of the country and these companies which are being formed in the startup boom i am at least say very excited that we are going to have some phenomenal companies which are going to become global companies but the problem here is there are thousands of companies being started started up and maybe a few 50 100 150 200 or at max 500 of these companies will win so these are this is a very high risk investment opportunity where if you one company works for you it will give you 100 times return but you know if if you have a portfolio of 10 you can even expect 6 to 7 or 8 companies not to give anything to you so you need to understand that whereas on digital logistics i think it is a phenomenal play phenomenal area because everything is now you know we just don't want to go anywhere we want to order everything from home and look at us the kind kind of online uh, shopping that we guys are doing and today people are delivering to even the remotest part of the country you know, yeah. uh, you know i have the people who are working for me and uh, you know earlier i used to give them a gift once a year now they come to me ke sir please use flipkart and get it delivered to my house so so you know that's the kind of difference like i have an annual uh, gift i say okay okay whatever you want you know let me gift it to you so you know people are today giving me your address and i'm amazed that, that uh, these that those things even large small medium are getting delivered all across the country so i think on and on on edtech i am also again very excited about it although it's a very you know highly like a boon sector but we we can all see the future of that ke every all of us want to learn online all of us are reading you know like uh, navin just said he's uh, reading about ark f- funds and kathy woods and even i do that you know she is one lady i really also like to follow and navin maybe you me and can do a talk with her one of these days yeah you know i i would love to do that so i think uh, you know so there is so much we and we have by you know when we are not going out that much we have that more time that we are spending at home and most of the, them are putting a part of this time in learning so i think edtech has a great future uh so uh, you know that that's my view uh, navin would you like to add anything here no i totally agree with you these are non linear opportunities and what aadhar has done in terms of linking the whole country uh, to a common platform and made it open architecture allows scalability uh, i mean with uh, uh, the entire country connected on you know mobile with smartphones with cost of data coming down uh with uh, aadhar linkages i believe that uh, uh, a digital explosion has already happened in india but uh, uh, a lot more value creation in this space is still ahead of us so uh, if you see a chart of the us you will see the number of unicorns really exploding and we still have a very handful or a tiny number of unicorns and i think what you've seen is really the trailer i think the best is ahead yeah so uh, there's a question coming up that since funds are allowed to invest i think 5% of their corpus in these small or unlisted companies picking up these winners in the and which you know through which they can participate in this journey without going in through a maybe a specific aif or something yeah absolutely in fact uh, you will see us also do this more and more within our india funds because there's no point just comparing an indian it services company with another indian it services company but you have enough uh, companies abroad that you can compare with so you will see investing uh, by indian managers go global also in the coming quarters and years yeah 
and also there is a very interesting question posed to you by Madhu Sudan that uh, which is on index versus passive investing and then they say that uh, you are having both so if you are ab always able to create an alpha then why even have passive so yeah so that's a very good question uh, madhu and i must tell you that uh, we have uh, chosen our passive funds very carefully we have defined what is our circle of competence and so 10 years back you know when nobody was talking about nasdaq we launched the Nasdaq fund and you see what is the kind of return that has been generated because we don't, we didn't have the, we didn't think we had the capability to invest in Nasdaq stocks. Likewise, the next fund that we did was S&P 500. So basically, if you see international area, the international investing is what we were not doing. And so our passive funds were launched in that area, right? Now we are not managing debt funds. And so we've launched a five-year GSEC fund. So we have carefully chosen only those areas where we are unable to add value through active management, and, but we want to provide clients with the best choice available. And if you see the value creation, the wealth creation in the S&P 500 fund, the wealth creation in the uh, uh, NASDAQ fund, I mean, uh, these are the kind of things that you will see us. For instance, you may be, I don't know whether you're aware, we don't have a small cap fund. But we launched a small cap index. So whichever is not my area of competence, but I want to offer you a product uh, which is the best in class there, I will offer you. In fact, our future suite of products are also going to be extremely interesting where we think that we will take 10, 15 years to build capabilities there. But remember one thing, markets will not wait 10, 15 years for the banking page. So I should be able to create that value for you during this period, even if I take time to build competence. So I think it is very carefully chosen complementary strategy rather than a competing strategy for us. So and again, a very interesting question, uh, Naveen. I think you can see it on the screen. We, yes. have people, we have some mutual fund distributors also from the industry who are here. And they're asking us, okay, look, uh, you know, SEBI has been reducing commissions and we have seen even there is a definite push to be going direct. So what do you feel about that? What's the future of these uh, independent financial advisors? And what is the, what is our take on certified financial planners in the coming years? I will let you answer, then I will put in my two bits on this question. Sure, sure. So basically, we believe that value addition in every sphere of life is the name of the game. Execution alone cannot add value. So I think this is a great time to unlearn, you know, what we have learned in the past and learn newer things. There's a lot of room to add value. For instance, is your client internationally diversified? Is your client invested in real estate funds? Is your client invested in private equity funds? Does your client understand scientific asset allocation? I mean, there are so many questions which I can tell you that the uh, clients don't understand. So that's my first uh, input. The second is that you may be seriously underestimating the kind of explosion in wealth that is ahead of India over the next decade. And all of you certified financial planners will be required. Please read the book by Nick Murray called Simple Wealth, Inevitable Wealth, and he will show you that even in a mature market like the United States, certified financial planners play a very important role. So I think it depends on how much value you are able to add, how many new things you are able to learn, what kind of products you are able to offer to your clients. But I can tell you that for those who can offer value, right, they will have enough people who will pay them. I must add one last thing that there's something in the, in the stock markets called IQ which has very little value because information is all pervasive. And there's something called temperament, which is very rare. They don't teach you that at Harvard or Stanford. And I would say that temperament is what you'll have to support your client with. What is temperament? Temperament is to be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. Did you handhold your client to say that please reallocate from your fixed deposit to equities back in March, April, May, June? If you had a scientific tool like the movie index that we follow, then you would have done it absolutely fearlessly. 
right? So I would say that equip yourself with some of these things, add value to your clients, provide an edge to them, and they will provide you the fees. This is my strong recommendation. I think very well answered, Naveen. So I will add my two bits to it. Okay, look, guys, uh, as they say, when the direct funds are available, direct investment options, commissions are being reduced. So only the people who add value will remain in the market. So today, if you're an IFA or you're a distributor or you want to build a career and you don't, haven't done a CFP, then believe me, you're not going to survive. And okay. if you have done a CFP, you understand investment and like what you can do, what Naveen was saying. See, you cannot learn this as you go because there will always be so many missing blanks in your knowledge. You will only learn what you come across. Whereas what a CFP curriculum aims to do is it's based on a global curriculum. It is aimed to teaching everything a wealth manager needs to know. Okay? So it is very important for you to do and, and tomorrow people will only be going to CFPs. Believe me. Believe me. So if you haven't done a CFP, then please log and go on to the Indian CFP website, International College of Financial Planning today. Go and join this program because you will not be able to survive in this industry if you have not done a certified financial planner or an equivalent program, which teaches you how to give advice in a very scientific and a rigorous manner. Because that, And if you are adding value to your customer, like you are a doctor, you will have people who are lined up outside waiting for you. You know, today they are doctors who are running after people to get patients, whereas other doctors who are people are, you know, trying to take an appointment even one month down. They are lawyers who get paid thousand rupees an hour. They are lawyer who charge one crore rupees for a 10 minute uh, consultation. It is all depends on the knowledge and CFP and International College of Financial Planning is very important on that. And there are people asking questions like, you know, as a CFP, can you join our teams? Definitely, because we also are looking at people who have invested their time, money, energy, and intelligence into being able to service the customers and being able to be good wealth managers, being able to give good advisors. So please do send in your biodata and you will have, at least for me, I can say, and I'm sure Naveen is also, I can see him nodding, you will have a much better chance of getting uh, this thing. But the people who want to join fund management, then CFP is a is a program which is meant for wealth managers. It is not meant for fund managers. Some of you who are exceptionally brilliant or who have learned a lot on their own may be able to get into wealth manage, uh, fund management also. But if you want to be an analyst or a research guy, then it is better that you go in for a CFA, which is an equivalent certification, which is meant for people uh, who, you know, who are wanting to get into research. So this is my take quickly. Uh, uh, Naveen, if we can have your take on this issue. No, absolutely. I think uh, the biggest quality that any analyst needs is curiosity, unlimited curiosity. You have to wake up every morning and be willing to explore you know, new things. You have to have a reading uh, mindset. You have to have a learning mindset because what is relevant today for investing may not be relevant after five years, 10 years. And I think definitely a degree like a CFA uh, will help you achieve that goal uh, better because you'll be exposed to some of the frameworks of investing. Okay. So guys, we are already over time. And, uh, you know, so I will, but we will take one last question because I think it's a, it's a need of the hour. And I would also like to say like all the people who are looking to start their investment journey or who are, who are here, please do go to our website of beefintastic.com and take some time to be, be, be understand investing and to become a good investor yourself. So even a company like, uh, you know, you may take the best of the advisory companies like Bajaj Capital or any other company out there. They cannot add value if the customer doesn't understand the basics themselves. And I don't know the exact figures. Naveen, maybe you can uh, elaborate on that. I was unofficially told because I couldn't find any, uh, you know, formal figures that during this time when the markets crashed, you know, a lot of people stopped the SIP. But the SIP through IFAs and distributors were, you know, versus the SIPs that were direct, that were stopped. And direct investors are supposed to be more severe. Almost four times more SIPs were stopped from direct investors than the investors who were investing through distributors. 
that was because the distributor was telling them stop this is not the time to be stopping your sip this is the time to be increasing your sip this is the time you need to be investing more you know my own wealth manager at bajaj capital made me sell all my debt funds and i think march and you know moved all my money into equities and i was actually scared every day because you know when we were it's not that i moved in at the bottom i moved in at i started moving it at 37000 then the market came to 35 33 you know 31 and i was really scared every day but he said no no sir we have to keep doing it and then you know today he's given me a great return and i think i'm a superstar smart investor that's why i do it i don't give him that credit but uh, but uh, that happens but you need to have a you know wealth manager or an advisor with you helping you with the journey but you need to have the basic understanding yourself and that will not happen if you don't invest in yourself so please go look at be fantastic it will cover everything you will want to know about investing about financial planning about budgeting how do you go about it every nuances that you you can come across uh, navin made a very good point on uh, health and the importance of health insurance and everybody has understood it so you know how do you choose the right product what to look for what not to look for what are the right questions to ask so it is very important so navin taking one last question people are talking about debt funds you know there are a lot of concerns about debt funds what do what should people do on the debt fund and uh, you know and uh, you know people are saying is it a uh, like a guilt versus long term debt what do you feel so you know even if we can take some we can give some clarity about debt i know we are over time but i thought this is something we must answer because this is there in the minds of a lot of people yeah so i i must first confess that i am not a debt expert i am an equity expert uh but uh, i can add two bits i mentioned to you that the multi asset fund has a 20 year track record of 8% uh, you know compounded return uh because of the power of asset allocation where it moves between debt domestic equities international equities and gold and so that's my first recommendation and a strong recommendation to you my second recommendation to you is that within debt funds i mean in rbi is working overtime you know that there is a liquidity of 6 lakh crores that uh, uh, exists in the system and rbi is working overtime to keep interest rates low but you cannot artificially keep rates at a particular level for very long so rates can go up and so long duration funds is not something that will be helpful uh, they would be risky so try and have shorter duration you know funds but if you can make an investment then a proper multi asset fund like the one which we have which is very debt oriented uh, can give you even more superior returns compared to the debt funds uh, that says and even the taxation on those funds will be far more favorable than a fixed deposit or a ncd or a corporate deposit or anything like that so those are my recommendations but i must uh, advise you that you should talk to an expert on this subject i am not uh, an expert and so i'm I, what i've shared with you is more common sense uh, and what i personally believe in thank you navin i, I really appreciate that uh, there's a one last question i'll answer is that you are 28 years old should you buy life insurance yes definitely you know you should buy life insurance at the youngest possible age and today you have coverage available till the age of 85 or 99 years and i would definitely say buy it for the longest possible term and what you can do is you can restrict the premium paying term to maybe 10 years 15 years so that you don't end up forgetting but you must buy and if you buy a 99 you buy a term insurance till 70 you will have a 99% chance of out out living your term insurance if you buy a term insurance till 99 you only have an 8% chance if you know i'm saying that with the improved medical scenarios and all you know in next 50 years even then they say as per actual calculation there's an only 8% chance that you'll outlive your insurance so you must buy it the younger you buy the the lesser premium you will get and also today you have guaranteed return uh, plans available in life insurance which are giving 5 and 1/2 to 6% guaranteed returns over the next 10 15 20 years so you can allocate a part of your debt allocation to this and plus have some life cover so you always you know for us all investment professional it is your asset allocation which is very very important so you must allocate an asset like i am also a hardcore equity believer 
but I have also bought these guaranteed return plans. And the first guaranteed return plan I had bought was a plan called Jeevan Suraksha, which is still guaranteeing me 12% growth and it, uh, for, for the rest of my life. And it is from Life Insurance Corporation of India. My second plan was a 10% plan by LIC, where they are still giving me a 10% tax-free return. Today, what is available is 5.5% to 6%. I have still bought, you know, there's a plan where you invest uh, 1 lakh rupees a month and you get 2 lakh rupees a month, you know, after that, and then you get your money back, so something like that. So point is that I've still bought it because, you know, I want to have debt in also as a part of my allocation and I find them more exciting than a bank FD or something. So the amount of money I would have kept in my bank FD or my amount of money I would have kept, I have moved a little bit of money there. So I think, uh, I hope I've been able to answer your question. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Naveen. Uh, it was great to have you. I hope we were able to add value to the investors and people's life. And I hope people become richer uh, after listening to us today. So wishing, uh, thanking you and, uh, you know, any last word you would like to say and then thank, you know, just a big thanks to everyone for taking an out time and being here today with us. Thank you, Sanjeev, firstly, for the opportunity. It's always uh, very engaging and uh, a, a great experience to, you know, uh, talk to you and engage with investors. And I was telling you before the session that it is my, uh, you know, personal privilege that we're getting to address all these audiences because we've made everything from the stock markets and we should allow them and share with them all the wisdom that we've gained over uh, a period of time. My only uh, uh, sincere recommendation is that while there may be thousands of doctors, good doctors in your city, there are very few successful money managers in your city and in the world. And for common cold, if you go to a doctor, right? Remember that for a subject as complicated and with so much involvement of luck besides skill, you know, uh, go to a professional manager rather than trying to do it yourself. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of people trying to do it yourself these days. Uh, it is fantastic. You know, uh, I, I mean, I can only really remind you that Abhimanyu knew how to enter the chakra view, but he did not know how to exit it. And uh, I'm, I don't want to scare any retail investor, but we are all like Abhimanyus who know how to get in because the uh, mark to market is up every day. But getting out of Chakraview requires you to be an Arjun and not Abhiman. And that only very few people are. So uh, this is a fantastic time of our life and opportunity. I would I call it once in a lifetime opportunity. And next five years, if you give time to the markets, if you buy right and sit tight, then I think the amount of money that you will make I am promising you will surprise you enormously. You'll be very proud. Your families will be very proud. But all you have to do is buy right and sit tight. Thank you very, very much for your patient hearing. And thank you once again, Bajaj Capital and Sanjeev. It's always my greatest pleasure and delight to be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you, Naveen. And thank you, everyone, for being here. Just for your information, we are going to be going live at the same time every 15 days. So please do take out this time. And, uh, you know, this time will be uh, probably the most well-invested time of your life. And you will end, hopefully end up making, creating a lot of wealth on the side, which we wish you do. So wishing you all the best. Thank you and bye. Thank you.